systemic racism. And most times... Has it gotten worse since 1960? Yes, actual... Yes, actually... Systemic racism has gotten worse since Jim Crow. Yes. So you want me to give you a stat? Black home ownership today is less than it was pre-Fair Housing Act of 1968. But let me also talk about the fact that... that being the welfare let, state. Let me, let, me also, sure. let me also tell you this. A lot of times when we talk about racism, we only talk about the fact when somebody calls you nigger. But very rarely do we talk about the systems of injustice and oppression we have in this country. Where I'm from, Denmark, South Carolina, you don't have clean water, right? I live in a food desert, or grew up in a food desert, where you can't go a mile or two and have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. The schools are falling apart. The infrastructure is eroding. But, Kari, but is but, your life as a black man better or worse than it would have been if you had been born in 1920 in the United States? Well, if a you black man? all you have to do is ask my father, who literally was shot in the Orangeburg massacre, right? Who helped found SNCC, who marched with Marion Barry and Stokely Carmichael and Martin Luther King, and the list goes on and on and on. And he will tell you today that he feels like this country's at 1954. And so, if you want to talk about somebody, but that doesn't who, mean it is. Well, you said he feels that way. That's ridiculous. Well, this is one of the inconvenient truths about black politics is that. It's based a lot on feelings and emotionalism, not based on rationale, not based on any logic. For the most part, it seems like in back black politics, it seems like you guys try to use logic to justify emotional conclusions. And you, you latch onto any data point that superficially gives the appearance of proving your narrative. And one of the realities that I pointed out, like, for instance, racial disparities, and this is a big um, debate amongst black America, right? Black conservatives versus black liberals versus black, uh, black progressive, Marxist, socialist, whatever you want to call yourself, is that the argument that conservatives like me believe is, is due to behavior, is due to your decision making. Just because you feel like systematic racism is holding you back doesn't mean it actually is. And one of the biggest uh, frames that I have about this argument is back politics focus on the imagination of a problem versus the reality of a problem. Reality of the problem is more black lives are killed by other black people, other black men. How is, how is police brutality your biggest problem when, if you look at the data of what actually happens, unarmed black men die 12. 12, 12 unarmed, unarmed black men died at the hands of cops. And in most cases, it's due for them re resisting arrest. Another thing, oh, uh, uh, I got pulled over while driving black. If you look at the stats, Black people get more speeding tickets, a.k.a. that's proof that black people, due to their driving behavior, on average drive faster than other races of people. So that means you're more likely to get, what, pulled over by the cops. But you keep trying to make this superficial argument about, oh, racism, the system's against me, pernicious racism. And this is why black politics is not being taken seriously anymore. This is why... A part of me believes and knows that the black vote, the black politics, black people are losing the moral argument when it comes to many of the things that they claim they want, like reparations, uh, all this other stuff. To me, you guys got no moral grounds to really stand on. And then you try to create this imagination of Trump, of, about Trump being a racist when the generation that actually got stuff done for black America, right, in the 60s, Unlike you, Malcolm X was not obsessed with politics or foolish or foolish enough to think uplift, the uplift can be outsourced to politicians. And this is one of the biggest arguments between conservatives and black progressives specifically. Not black liberals, black progressives specifically. Because they like to pretend that politics, policy, can rise the black people out of, out of poverty, rise the black people out of their circumstances, and that's not the case. Only human capital can do that. Only the community itself can uplift itself out of poverty have you ever tried to get a homeless man up on the right and narrow it's up to that homeless man's choice if you can give the homeless man all the money you can take care of him you can pay rent for him for three months to give him time to figure himself out you can get him cleaned up and he'll still end up being homeless and then that's when you start realizing hmm maybe homelessness was a choice maybe being at the bottom is a choice when you're a man intent on building something of value for yourself and family, not even hardcore racist scares you. And you need to get your T-levels up, champ. What do you mean we can't join the Klan? And this is, how, this is why I'm saying that black politics is too emotional. That I don't know how to make logical trade-offs. Right now, the trade-off is clear. Would you rather have Donald Trump or Kamala Harris? Right? And this is the problem. This is why black liberals. This is why y'all 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 don't represent black y'all don't y'all don't represent the black the 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 best interests of black politics. 
all you represent is the interest of yourselves and your power and your influence, and you're trying to maintain that. You're trying to get us to go along with, go along to get along, when legitimately, right, if I'm looking at this from a racial lens, you guys are doing the same thing. So you're casting Donald Trump as racist, xenophobic, bigoted, all this stuff. He's the first president in U.S. history whose family never owned any slaves because he's descended from German immigrants. And then you got Kamala Harris, descendant of a uh, Hamilton Brown who owned over 1, 1,200 slaves in Jamaica. So now the, vic the, the oppressed and oppressive narrative, it doesn't apply in this election. Right, black progressive. That's what I'm saying. You guys will do anything, twist any logical conclusions to fit what you want in society. You feel like, oh, black women getting killed just as much as black men when it comes to police shooting. 95% of victims of police shooting are men. So you're latching onto a problem that doesn't even affect you that much, black women. And you want to pretend, oh, because of some exceptions. The rule is black people kill other black people. 74% of people who die at the hands of a gun is due to another black person pulling it. Who's killing all these black rappers? Black people. And this is how y'all losing the moral argument. On this next clip I'm about to show you, and this is the inconvenient truth about black politics, at that black people has been warned, like black conservatives have been warning about this for a long time. I saw videos of Candace Owens trying to tell T.I. this stuff. He didn't want to hear it. Yeah, it's gonna it's catching up to y'all. Look at this clip about uh this guy. He made he was the creator of Boondocks, and his statement here, I agree a hundred percent about it on his face. Let's take a look. I really want you guys to understand that time is running out. And a lot of black people say that, but for real. Part of why the civil rights movement has been so successful and part of why those who have come after in terms of our leadership have been able to maintain a presence is that black people have always had a certain amount of moral currency that we have been using. And let me be the first to tell you, that's used up. White America has been watching us act like fools for a long enough time where any sympathy they may have had to our plight is completely gone. You're approaching a country that forget hating black people and not hating black people, they just don't care. You can be talking about affirmative action, they can be like, I, I don't care. <laughs> it literally is of no importance to me. I don't care about slavery, I don't care about segregation, I don't care about you, I don't care how many of you all go to jail, I care, I don't care at all, because I'm broke. You can't be the proud, noble fighter when every single time someone sees a person that looks like you on television, they're acting like a damn fool. How would they know, how would they know you're not a damn fool? They're gonna talk to you? Yeah, right. This is what we're facing. Now, this was not a very motivational speech because I'm not a motivational speaker. I gotta be honest, no wait. That don't matter to me. I'm a critic. That's what I do for a living. I'm not here to tell you you can do it, because you know what, maybe you just can't do it. <laughs> I'ma be real. I'm gonna be real. I hope you can do it. I hope to God you can do it. You better do it. Because if you don't, will you suffer? Yeah. But oh, your kids are gonna catch hell. You guys are it. Don't think about Jesse, don't think about Al. They will not be there. That's, that's a sobering reality that black America needs to hear. I'm, I'm being honest. Yeah, you can make, you can, you can, you can, you know, you can latch all the criticism you want at me. I'm a second generation American. That means my mom and my father are immigrants. They came from Haiti, immigrated here, met in Miami, a legend was born. I'm a second generation American. And I believe as a second generation American, I can objectively point out the real effects of racism. And it's a minor. Racism is equate to personal inconvenience. Hey, get offended. But if I can't, if I can't offend you, that means I can't think. And I'm, I'm thinking today. You're going to hear it today. 
because you want to spin up all these narratives of how racism is holding you back. And I'm like, you're using racism as an alibi. What you can't do in America? Naming something a black person can't do in America. If America was so bad, why you don't relinquish your citizenship and go to Africa? You wouldn't do that. Put your money where your mouth is. Action speaks louder than words. If this was such a bad country to be at, I should see a mass uh, amount of people leaving the United States. But I don't, I'm not seeing that. Narrative. Whites are the most racist and intolerant people on earth. Reality. The exact opposite. Black people are the most racially intolerant people. And this is what the, the Boondocks creator, Aaron, was warning you guys about. You guys have lost your moral position. You're sitting here pretending that you're a victim when really you're an oppressor. I'm, I'm being honest. Especially coming from a black immigrant, a descendant of black immigrants, you guys are oppressors. Because when we come in and we're working hard, we become resourceful. In one generation, we, ca we catch up to people who've been here for generations because apparently generational wealth is supposed to be a thing. But you have not, your people have not passed down generational wealth to the next generation. You want to accuse racism. How I know as a, uh, as a descendant of black immigrants that you're not using racism as an alibi because of your poor decision makings. Some of the most successful people in the United States are minority groups. Look at the incomes of Indians. I don't hear you saying it's Indian supremacy, Taiwanese supremacy, Chinese supremacy. You, you, your narrative is, destroyed, is being broken in real time. And all of America is going like this for me. Because Aaron only focused on white America. I don't focus on white America. This is a multiracial country. All races of people see the same thing with the black America. Yo, these people are effing up themselves and they're trying to blame everyone else for it. No one told you to go to student loan debt for a useless degree in business and communications. No one told you to get a PhD in that business degree. Now you're asking all of America to forgive student loans because of reparations. Look at the white America. 65, look at that. Look at that. But white supremacy. Yo, y'all losing, losing the moral argument. Immigrant blacks outperform the native African-American population. Look at the Ghanaians. Make more money than the whites. Make more money. The Egyptians make more money than the whites. The Nigerians make about the same as the whites on average. Jamaican, Haitians. And look at you guys. 43%. 43K. But white supremacy. This is what I'm talking about. As a second generation American, I can better, I can more objectively see the effects of racism, the actual effects of racism. And it seems to me the generational curse, the reality of the generational curses that's affecting Eidos, foundational black America, is the fact that the previous generation brainwashes the future and current generation that they are helpless because of their skin color. They, they condition the minds of black America, the, the, the Eidos people, that they are helpless because of their skin color. That they're less than because of their skin color. The bigotry of low expectation. That's what you pass down onto your kids. Ados was able to survive slavery, Jim Crow, but liberal narratives that they teach to their kids is what destroyed their community. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. Because I'm tired of y'all crap. You, and this is where you lose the moral argument for reparations. Right? Less than 1%. Oh, sorry. Only 1.6% of U.S. citizens owned slaves in 1860 when slavery was at its peak. So you can stop basing your hate on the, the, the sins of merely 1.6% of the population. Like, imagine that. Black community, you lost your moral argument here. Because if white community said, oh, black people are criminals, what's the, what's the first pushback black America says? Only a minority of black Americans are criminals. You're being racist by insinuating that all of black America are criminals. Oh, but looky here. Only 1.6% of U.S. citizens at the time of slavery owned slaves. Yet you want to blame the entire system, white supremacy, all this nonsense. Hey, look. Inconvenient truths. This is the inconvenient truths. So when, when you get this guy here, uh, what, I don't know, Bakari Sellers. Debating with Ben Shapiro about how he has it harder. Or 2020, 2024 is just like 1954. Because my daddy felt like. Feel, feel, feel. How about no? What, do you know that? Do you know that for sure? And if you know what is, what is uh, informing that, please show us. Because anytime you are asked to prove your 
Narrative, prove how racism is holding you back. You can't. One reason I don't get bent out of shape about Biden, you ain't black comment, is because he was only saying what black liberals have been saying for decades. To them, blackness is primarily a political identity that is defined by Team Blue Sad. All the black, all, all the intelligent people in the black community see what y'all doing, Democrats. 95% of black women are voted Democrat in 2020. 77% of black men voted for Democrat in 2020. This is the inconvenient truth about black politics. It's run by the Democratic Party. And then when black conservatives point this out, oh, both sides, two sides of the same coin. Yeah, but majority of people are still voting for that one side. Majority of you guys have a blind spot towards the Democratic Party and you believe their narratives about Donald Trump. Are Democrats aren't incapable of lying? Yes. Okay, so why you believe their lie about Donald Trump being the, the worst thing since Hitler when he's not a descendant of a slave owner, but Kamala Harris is? But God forbid you have you like Thomas Jefferson. I like Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson was a slave owner. Don't don't correct me. Y'all y'all voted for two descendants of slave owners. Don't get don't get don't oh sorry. Don't don't get on me. Obama was a descendant of a slave owner. Don't get on me. Oh, but, but a perceived racist. Oh, you, that's what you that's what you're crying about. Feelings. There's a difference between being politically black and being racially black. I am not defending anyone, but we all know this should this and should stop pretending that we don't. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm black. I'm not stupid. Like this is why I said black liberals, you prey on the ignorant. Because every narrative you have, there's another explanation for why it happens. But you know what? You know what? Uh, black liberals, especially black liberal women. Sorry, I'm, I'm picking on black liberal women today. Raising your kids under your belief system. Yikes! That sounds like indoctrination, and that's what the black community do. This is what Ados do to their own kids. Oh, uh, uh, police brutality. If you go out in the streets, you gotta work twice as hard as a white man. You gotta do this, and you don't even do that. Look at the test scores. Your, your black kid fails a math test you know he didn't study for, and you're going to say it's because of racism. Pernicious racism. You're going to be like Embram X. Kendi. Math is racist. We got to make oh, uh, 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 math anti-racist. What the hell that means? Obviously, you should raise them under my belief systems. When you don't see a talking... When you, when you say something like abortion is racist, abortion disproportionately affects... Uh, Black people, abortion kept the black people as a minority. When if abortion was a ban at 1972, black community, the black America would have been the second largest population in America right now. Would have been like at 21% of the population. That's a lot of voting power. All you had to do was ban abortion. But you don't see that political angle. I know you're basing a lot of your political opinions, especially in black politics, on emotions. Because every time I go, okay, logically explain to me how... Racism is affecting you. All I hear is feelings. People say you can't. Uh, representation. Okay, why not be the first? We went from why not be the first to because no one looked like me before means I can't do it. Make that make sense. Uh, I'm just saying. I'll end off the video with this. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men. From men whose words are pervasive, perverse. Wisdom will save you from the adulterous woman and from the wayward woman with her seductive words. Wisdom is more profitable than silver or gold. Nothing you desire can compare with wisdom. Not narratives, not perception, not feelings. And wisdom is, hey, just because you feel like something's the case doesn't mean it is. You could be wrong. It seems like in black politics, black people never ask themselves, what if we're wrong? What if we're wrong about the Democratic Party being the path to better black America? What if we're wrong that it's not policies that's going to help black people rise up? It's actually us changing our culture and creating a new incentive structure within our communities to, out, to produce more people who, are, who will be successful in the long term. Push our kids, be more invested in our kids' education. Raising our kids outside of the fam, uh, single family household, baby mama, baby daddy culture. Let's stop pushing this generosity in our community and start pushing more morals and characters that will give us better outcomes. How about we look at what other racial groups are doing to have success in this country and emulate that and incorporate that into our culture, into our communities, so we can start getting 
getting more competitive in other avenues in America. How about we focus on that? But black liberals, black progressives, they like to pretend that culture, oh, culture can't do nothing. Culture can't fix nothing. Culture decides politics. What are you talking about? And this is why I'm tired of the state of black politics. And I'm allowed to speak on black politics because at the end of the day, I'm an American. I'm born here just as you. There's no difference between us. Oh, I'm a Hados. I'm a descendant of slaves. So am I. I'm Haitian. It's not my fault Haitians freed themselves in a revolution and then my parent and then they squandered it and then my parents came here. It ain't my fault, but I'm still a descendant of slaves, technically. But you want to pretend you got some moral high ground. No, y'all lost all of that. Y'all used up all of that. Because people are starting to see that you're using the moral high ground that was given to you, passed down to you. And then, then black black people want to get mad about black privilege. The black privilege was. In the 60s, you've been handed over a moral high ground that you use and abuse for years, for decades. Oh, if you disagree with me, you're a racist. Oh, you question a, a biracial woman called Kamala Harris, you're a racist, sexist, duh. abused it. And now people go, oh, yeah, 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 I'm a racist, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, what about this? What, but, 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 is these, but is these stats true or not? Y'all commit half the crimes and you only 30% of the population. Yeah, 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 I know I'm racist, okay, but, uh, but what about these facts here? Y'all see it? Hey, keep denying reality. Keep denying reality. But this is the state of black politics. This is the inconvenient truth about black politics. You try to make people feel guilty because of your skin color. Oh, racism stopped me. And people felt sorry for you. People felt sympathy for you until you started using it as a hustle. Abraham X. Kendi, anyone? And you wonder why people just, uh, uh. You wonder why the Democrat Party wants to replace y'all with illegal immigrants. And even with that, majority of black people still seems like they're going to vote Democrat in the 2024 election. I mean, you get what you sow. You reap what you sow. But I, I digress. I know y'all going to take this as a lecture, but I mean, am I lying? Did I lie? Let me know in the comment section. I, I, I'm interested because unlike y'all, I'm not offended when people disagree with me. Because I'm not going to get smarter by sitting here in an echo chamber and not hearing other opinions that I don't, I don't know. And, and it shouldn't be... And then this, here's the funny part. And this is another way y'all lose moral high ground as well. Is the fact that you, you want to make this argument that only black people can criticize other black people. Then when a black person does criticize other black person, you try to find a way to discredit that black person as well. Make it make sense. So you think you're perfect. Last time I checked, perfection ain't, perfection ain't a human trait. This is crazy. This is this is the craziness we're in. And instead of being inclusive, hey, all Americans can point out these problems. It, it shouldn't be based on my skin color that I'm allowed to criticize something and I'm not allowed to criticize something. Racial disparities. But I digress. I'm done rambling. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching the, to the end of the video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.